prosperity gospel began in a land of prosperity, my country, the United States. Preachers of the prosperity gospel teach that success and wealth are the marks of faith. This new form of Christianity is flourishing in many parts of the world, especially the continent of Africa. I went to Ghana to see what prosperity could mean in a place less prosperous than my own. The first place I visited was a small church where a visiting Nigerian pastor devoted much of his sermon to describing his collection of Mercedes automobiles. <laughs> He ended his sermon with a request. So when you come to the house of God, and you put money, now this year, you are demonstrating now we how big or small your faith is. Listen to this. The other day we were here, God spoke to me that he has come to bless this land. You are this land. Economically, financially, in every area he has come to bless you. You must respond to him. Now, before I came, God said, make sure that they give in dollars. If you can give a hundred dollars, come forward quickly. You can give a hundred dollars. Okay, you can give fifty dollars. You can give thirty dollars. Come on, twenty dollars. Give twenty-five dollars. Come on, twenty dollars. I command and will command doors of financial breakthrough to be open to you. And I rebuke every devourer, 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 every Mighty name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. The response surprised me, not just the financial offering, but the ecstatic worship. something deeper going on here. This was not just a simple scheme that promised money for blessings. It connected emotionally and spiritually with people. While the prosperity gospel is an American export, it has flourished amidst the traditional worldview of many Africans. They believe that powerful spiritual forces are at work in the world and look to a supreme being as the giver of life. There's a constant struggle to tap into strength from the supernatural in order to, to survive in a world of, of uh, you know, a world that is uh, physically and spiritually precarious. Professor Kwabana Asamoah Giadu is an expert in African Christianity. These churches, the new Pentecostal churches we have, and even the older ones, offered something new to the African public that was missing in the message of the historic mission churches. And that's something I believe is a message of hope. Not just the hope of heaven, but hope that is existential. 
something that you can realize here. If you serve God faithfully, if you work hard at what you do, you can make it. There are some things you cannot explain and there are some things you cannot stop by psychology and by medicine and academic and your mind and by logic. You can only stop them by the weapon of prayer and not faith. Is somebody hearing what I am saying? Can I somebody shout prayer? Yeah. Shout it again and say prayer. At the Royal House Chapel, the pastor saw the prosperity gospel as a direct answer to the poverty of his community. And I can see this spirit fighting and chasing somebody. But today, we want to tell them there is a man who cannot be defeated. There is a woman who cannot be defeated. And that person is sitting here right now. That person is listening to me wherever you are. Clap your hands and shout, I cannot be defeated. We were born in poverty. We suffered. We struggled. We almost didn't get food to eat. We struggled for food. We struggled for space, for love. You might have been born into poverty, but you can change the status quo and turn around and leave a legacy of wealth for your children. You have been born into many difficulties and challenges, but hey, it starts with you. So for us, preaching prosperity, dreaming prosperity, Craving for prosperity, praying for prosperity is not negotiable. It's, 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 it's a power to break poverty. It's a compelling argument. A sanctified materialism offers a way out of poverty. But to my eyes, this church was filled with middle-class Ghanaians with access to all sorts of resources. What about the poor? Does the prosperity gospel work for them? Throughout Ghana, healing camps like this are popping up. People come for 7 to 21 days to be healed and delivered from all manners of spirits and demons. They arrive with physical, mental, and emotional needs. Some even arrive with their passports seeking prayer for visas. There are so many, countless of them, uh, every corner of the country. If you preach prosperity, that people must prosper by all means, when they do the right things, and by right things, paying tithes, paying offerings, being faithful to the gospel and so on. But it gets to a point where things don't seem to work the way we've been taught that they work. In a way, this is the end of the line for the prosperity gospel. Pilgrims, desperate for God's promised blessings, but incapable of grabbing them for themselves. Perhaps the only real difference between them and me is that for me to be materially blessed, I don't have to turn to God at all. <laughs>